Good afternoon, Dr. Sasan. Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, okay. I'd like to, uh, first of all, I'd like to convey uh, uh, thank you for accepting as a guest speaker for our students. So I just like, like to give a brief introduction about Dr. Sasan Seker. He is a head of the Department of Physiotherapy at Sun Iskwar Singh General and Multi Speciality Hospital, Haryana. So he will be talking about a, a lecture on ECMO and in exabulator devices, which is used in ICU for critically ill patients, uh, which may helps to improve and maintain their cardiorespiratory function. So today you will going to learn how to use and when to use. So without taking much time, I request Dr. Sasan to continue with his uh, session, lecture session for today. Thank you so much, Dr. Sasan. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for the generous introduction. Can I interact with the class? Is that possible? You can interact with the students. Uh, okay. I'm just worried they may not be able to hear. So you may not be able to hear their voice because the camera okay. is. Okay, I, I, I understand that. Yeah. I understand. Okay. Okay, good. So, first of all, can they hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Good. So, hello everyone. Um, my name is Shasha. So, uh, we'll start talking about in actor in ICU. So, uh, before starting that, so let me introduce you to like, I will share the screen and then we'll start discussing about the use of ECMO device and the physiotherapy perspective while a patient is on ECMO device. So ECMO is extracorporeal membrane oxygenation therapy. So I will share the screen first, then we'll start discussion. to all hello the screen is not visible hello the screen isn't visible yet I know, ma'am. Sasha, just a minute, huh? There's a little bit of technical glitch right now. Just before we started, it was working fine. Uh, Dr. Sasan, please share your screen. Not yet. We cannot see a screen yet. 
can we not be hello hello if you can start okay okay so before this discussion ecmo so ecmo is a device extra corporeal hello We can hear you. We can. Hear you. Good. So, ECMO, extra corporeal membrane oxygenation. So, extra corporeal is something which is outside of our body. It is done outside of our body. And membrane oxygenation, it is a temporary supportive treatment for the patients which are severe respiratory or cardiac failure. So, and they are severely hypoxic or hypercapnic. So this is also known as extracorporeal life support or interventional lung assist. So when we talk about ECMO device, so what exactly happens in this? So use of an artificial lung or membrane for gas exchange. Am I audible? Yes, yes, you are audible. So the gaseous exchange through an artificial lung or membrane. So in this, the two things which are achieved is delivery of oxygen to meet metabolic needs and removal of carbon dioxide. So when a patient, all the therapies, all the available mechanical ventilation, maximum me mechanical ventilation settings are used, all the medicines, are not working on the patient and the lungs are not recovering and the patient is severely hypoxic or hypercapnic. So to give him time, to give the lungs time to recover, the patient is put on a device which is known as extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. So the exact word which is used for nowadays, it is interventional lung assist. Hello. Yes. Audible? Yes. So in you have not changed the slide, right? I know, I know, I know. This is just the introduction part. Okay. Yes. So when discussing about extracorporeal life support device. So this device is basically consists of cannula, tubing, a pump, then a membrane oxygenator, heat exchanger, and gas blender. So to give recovery time, in case of acute lung injury, ARDS, so it provides as a bridge therapy. So in this, the cannula is in, cannulation is done in large veins or arteries. So next, the blood is pumped from patient's body through the tubing in an oxygenator, which adds oxygen and removes carbon dioxide. Screen chala gaya. Hello. Hello.
can't go you up right now. Hello. Yes, we can hear you now. But can you go back to your speaker? The uh, slide is visible. Yes. Okay. So I was explaining about the extracorporeal membrane oxygenation system, and so it comes as the last resort in case of severe respiratory failure in acute lung injury. Or ARDS. So it provides a bridge therapy. So gives time for recovery and may be used before lung or heart transplant as a bridge therapy. Clear till now? Hello. Yes, sir. So, when discussing about the system, so two large cannulas, cannulation is done through veins, large veins and arteries. So, in this, there are two types. One is veno-venous, one is veno-arterial. So, VV ECMO and VA ECMO. So, the use of these two is different for different patients. So, in respiratory failure, but the patient's hemodynamics are stable. So when the patient's hemodynamics are stable, but only respiratory failure is there, the veno-venous, so two cannula, large cannulas will be placed in two large veins for this veno-venous ECMO. So if a patient has respiratory failure and cardiac failure, both hemodynamic instability, then the ECMO is provided as veno-arterial, VA ECMO system. So in that, a large vein and large artery is chosen for the cannulation. Clear till now? Good. So through this cannula, the blood is pumped from patient's body to the oxygenator via the tubing. So a pump is used and the fluids and heparin are mixed to keep the blood thin, so to prevent clotting. So then in the oxygenator, the oxygenation is done. Next, the carbon dioxide removal is done. And then the blood is warmed to the heat exchanger and via tubing and the next cannula, it is transferred to the patient's body. So, any doubts in working or any questions? In working or in the introduction and working? Hello? Hello? Any doubts in working, introduction, working? No doubts, no doubts. Good. So, this was the basic about the introduction and the working of ECMO system. So, next we will talk about... So, these are the components, cannula, tubing, pump, membrane oxygenator and heat exchanger and gas blender. So, the cannulas... Uh, so I will expl explain it again. So the cannulas, they are placed in large veins or large arteries. Depending on them, there are two types of e ECMO, VV, venovenous, and venoarterial. Through the tubing, the blood is pumped into the oxygenator and heat exchanger. So in oxygenator, the blood is oxygenated and next carbon dioxide is removed. And through the heat exchanger, the temperature of the blood is maintained. Next. The blood is mixed with the blood thinners, use of heparin, so that to prevent clotting. So, we'll talk about history. So, how it started. Around 1970, the first reported use of ECMO 
is in 1970. So in around 1974, a neonate aspirated meconium at the time of delivery. So the patient remained hypoxic despite maximum ventilatory efforts. So the patient was put on ventilator. It was just a three-day-old baby, just born. So and had a episode of meconium aspiration. So uh, he was put on ventilator, and the ventilator settings were set on maximum. But patient remained hypoxic. Then the ECMO ECMO was initiated, and the neonate recovered fully in three days. So this was the used this was used in pediatric population initially so next in university of michigan so the director of extra corporeal life support team headed by dr robert so he used ecmo again in pediatric population those who were with respiratory failure and reported around 44% of survival coming to the adult population the first notable trial was caesar trial which was published in 2006 and done between 1993 to 95 in uk so in this trial hello yes sir so in this trial conventional ventilator support and extra corporeal membrane oxygenation were two arms so this trial was criticized for its its study setting but it gave us a significant result of survival in ecmo group so this was the first trial which was done in adults and it showed a significant improved survival in the group which was kept on extra corporeal membrane oxygenation clear so next in 2018 a multi center trial was done and in this it showed a reduction in 60 days mortality in the group treated with ecmo so when we talk about indications of extra corporeal membrane oxygenation so when a patient has severe ards and is not responding to prone position and the ards net protocol for ventilatory settings so when we call severe ards it is defined by the berlin definition so to talk about indications for use of ecmo so the purpose of use of ecmo is more important then the diagnosis hello yes sir uh, am i audible and clear yes sir good so the purpose of use of ecmo is more important than diagnosis so for organ recovery so to provide time needed for recovery of function so when there is a acute lung injury or ards to patient so it provides time for recovery to the lung so in case of severe ards if it is not responding to prone positioning and the ventilatory settings defined by ards net protocol so the patient is put on ecmo so how do how do we define severe ards it is according to the berlin definition which we will discuss later i think they know it sasha they know it yeah we have covered it in class but they remember it and doubt do they remember it yes sir they do you remember it hello so am i audible Yes. So, according to ARDS Berlin definition, you all know that the timing is very important. Within one week of a known clinical insult, insult, there is any new or worsening respiratory symptoms, and the chest imaging shows opacities, 
bilateral which are not explained by any effusions lung collapse or nodules then oxygenation according to pyf ratio mild moderate and severe so i think it has been explained to you in detail so when a patient is of severe ards and not getting better by all the maximal ventilatory settings then it is as early as poss possible to prevent permanent organ damage the patient should be put on ecmo clear till now yes sir good so next is to bridge to receive organ transplant so when the patient is going to underwent lung or heart transplant so use of ecmo as a bridge therapy use of ecmo and ventricular assistive device so that oxygenated blood is delivered to the patient without putting much effort so when the next organ is available for the patient so it is used but it is not a permanent solution it is just a temporary bridge therapy in those patients clear till now so and again bridge to decision so if there are any again extra corporeal life support device to be used so to provide a temporary support or to palliative care it is used again the most proper indication is purpose is more important than diagnosis see uh, a patient may come to you with ards or vasculitis severe pneumonia or pulmonary embolism so the treatment is not ecmo treatment should be the recommended guidelines but if all the guidelines after all the guidelines it is not working and the lungs are not recovering and patient is having severe hypoxia or hypercapnia then the ecmo should be started as soon as possible to prevent permanent organ damage so in some cases with respiratory there is arrest or sepsis induced myocardial depression then the use of veno arterial if you remember the use of veno arterial the one cannula will be, will be in a large vein and one cannula will be in a large artery the use of veno arterial ecmo in a case of respiratory and cardiac instability clear till now hello yes sir any doubts any questions hello you have doubts so so one thing which is considered is for severe ards berlin definition and in respiratory conditions there is one chart that is called murray score and the murray score of 3 to 4 indicates a mortality more than 80% so there is also ecmo protocol which is still being discussed so they have suggested that if a patient hello yes sir if a patient has more than 3 or 4 mare score he or she should be put on ecmo as soon as possible so as you can see the pyf ratio the patient is scored based on it then the chest x ray the points are given as per the quadrants of the chest x ray infiltrate and the maximum peep settings then lung compliance so all the scores are added and divided by 4 and the score if it is above 3 or 4 the mortality rate is more than 80% so for ecmo if a patient murray score is more than 3 or 4 he or she should be put on ecmo as soon as possible any doubts till now hello no doubt good so talking about absolute contraindications if a patient has advanced 
malignancy carcinoma or any fatal diagnosis so there will be no use of putting ecmo or any unwitnessed cardiac arrest and patient un in unwitnessed cardiac arrest and the recovery of patient is not recorded so the use of ecmo is not indicated and in an progressive and non recoverable respiratory disease in non -recover recoverable respiratory disease after putting on ecmo if the lung function does not recover there is no point putting on ecmo then with severe pulmonary hypertension and the mean pulmonary artery pressure if it is approaches to the systemic pressure so if we put patient on ecmo so the bleeding risk will increase and the patient will have chances of hemorrhage and stroke so in severe cardiac failure if va ecmo veno arterial ecmo is not working then again it is difficult for patient to survive and then immunosuppression if patient is on immunosuppressant suppression because of large veins and arteries cannulation he is on risk of infection and sepsis so it is absolute contraindication in case of immunosuppressions in relative contraindications pre existing conditions which may affect the quality of life so these should be considered before putting a patient on ecmo so when we put a patient on ecmo he will be connected to multiple lines and tubes so talking about multiple lines and tubes so the two main cannulation will be in large veins and arteries then the patient's arterial blood pressure will be monitored then there will be a central venous line for delivery of drug vasopressors and inotropes am i audible yes so for delivery of vasopressors and inotropes and delivery of all the drugs there will be a central venous line then two major cannula and one arterial line monitoring and other needed catheters and tubes such as rail tube urinary catheter so if we are putting a patient on all these lines and tubes and there is any pre existing condition which has already affected the quality of life so it is relatively contraindicated with aids more than 70 year old again so the consideration will be if there is any point putting patient on ecmo then cpr duration more than 60 minutes if a patient has been survived by cardiac arrest and the cpr is done for more than 60 minutes so there is one concept called brain is bigger than heart so if the patient neurological status is not determined it is essential to determine the neurological status and then only put the patient on ecmo and if the patient is going through multiple organ failure due to sepsis or infection then again it is very important to consider the recovery chances and then only put patient on ecmo any doubt still now hello no sir so a patient if there is any central nervous system injury and if the patient is contraindicated to anticoagulation because blood thinners should be given because when the blood comes out of body so blood thinners will be used and if a patient is allergic to anticoagulation then it will be very difficult to maintain the ecmo because in tubing, tubing if it clots the whole tubing will be a failure and the patient will not survive and if the patient is had been on high pressures with peak pressures of more than 30 cm of uh, water and high oxygen need which is more than 80% on ventilator for more than 7 days then the lung injury is very severe and may not be recoverable recoverable so it is very important to assess these and then put patient on ecmo accordingly so what could be the possible complications 
so the first thing is hemolysis so when we put a patient on ecmo the first thing which is done is the blood is taken out through a large cannula so the breaking of rbc's loss of rbc is the major complication then as the blood thinners are going on risk of bleeding or thrombosis increases multi fold multi folds then the circuit might rupture if the titration of the blood is not done accordingly with heparin then the pump which is used to pump the blood back to the body can fail if there is any clot in the circuit or if there is any air in the circuit it can lead to air embolism then as the patient will be on multiple with multiple cannula multiple lines and tubes and a severely ill patient so the patient will be sedated and paralyzed in deep sedation and use of neuromuscular blockage will be done to keep patient sedated and paralyzed so in in icu acquired weakness and mechanical ventilator associated complications are very much important to be noticed so talking about icu acquired weakness in ecmo patients am i audible to you all yes so you all must have heard about icu acquired weakness weakness read about it hello uh, yes they have heard about it sir they have read about it heard about it or read about it both i guess okay so i will just recall very small things which are important in icu acquired weakness so it is also known as critical illness polyneuropathy so this critical illness polyneuropathy is critical illness myopathy and critical illness neuromyopathy so so if a patient is on ecmo what are the risk factors which may lead to this icu acquired weakness prolonged bed rest as the patient so due to prolonged ventilation and use of corticosteroids the patient's blood sugar will be uncontrolled leading to hyperglycemia and use of neuromuscular blockade agents and corticosteroids again lead to muscle weakness with longer sedation times deep sedation so and in the patients on ecmo for a longer duration the albumin labels are lower in the lowest segment so this leads to degenerations of axons with evident loss of myosin fibers and type 2 muscle fiber leading to atrophy of type 2 muscle fiber and axonal degeneration which leads to critical illness myopathy and critical illness neuromyopathy is it clear yes sir good so the ic you acquired weakness as the patient will be on ecmo for longer duration deeply sedated use of corticosteroids with use of neuromuscular blocking agents and longer sedation times leads to lower albumin levels causing injury to the axonal fibers and then loss of myosin and type 2 muscle fiber leads to critical illness myopathy and neuropathy then coming to the mechanical ventilator associated complications so hello question yes please please sir how does uh, how long does it take to go for this thing exogenous regeneration you have said no three three generation like you have said okay albumin again goes down so it goes for exogenous regeneration so you see the how which is how many days Yes. 
uh, Ambika, can you repeat the question with a, a little bit clearer way so I can answer it better? How long does it take for the axonal degeneration to occur? Okay. 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 So, in the patients with severe infection, with sepsis, and with all the risk factors, it is estimated between 8 to 12 days the appearance of atrophy of type 2 muscle fiber and loss of myosin leading to lower albumin levels and then after around 15 days it is noted that there is sepsis which leads to adjournal degeneration so regarding this hello yes so what i am telling about from 8 to 12 days there is a study uh, so whoever has asked this question so ambika you can provide my mail id to them I will mail them the study related to this, uh, which explains in detail about ICU acquired weakness and especially myopathy, which starts from 8 to 11 days due to all these factors. And then the neuropathy, which starts around in 15 days after a patient is admitted. Is it clear or should I explain it again? Yes, sir. So whenever asked, I will forward you this article and you can quote it saying so that at this point of time with this, the critical illness myopathy and then the neuropathy comes and both of these together leads to ICU acquired weakness. Clear? So coming to the mechanical ventilator associated complications. So, the first thing, if a patient is put on mechanical ventilator with uh, high settings, with high P, high oxygen requirements, and sedated and paralyzed, so the first thing which starts with be with, within 18 hours of mechanical ventilation is respiratory muscle weakness. Clear? Then, ventilator-associated pneumonia, if the secretions are cooling and not cleared frequently, then it leads to ventilator-associated pneumonia, ventilator-associated lung injury due to high P and barotrauma. And if a patient is on ventilator for a longer duration, it leads to swallowing dysfunction. Clear? So these were the two last points, intensive care unit acquired weakness, ICU acquired weakness, and mechanical ventilator associated complications, where the role of a physiotherapist comes into picture in management of a ECMO patient. Any doubts till now? Any doubts? Good. So, the role of physiotherapy in ECMO. So, the first thing which we will see is a patient if it is decided. So, hello. Yes. Any questions? Hmm? No. Hello. Okay. So, the first thing which we will as uh, which is done so if a therapist is posted in icu so he or she he must be part of the team which is going for the discussion if a patient is uh, with acute lung injury not recovering with maximum ventilatory settings so the patient, uh, the therapist must be a part of the team and if a decision is taken that patient should be put on ecmo so the first thing which comes into picture is a assessment of patient. So I don't think I have to talk much about assessment of a patient in ICU. Hello. Yes, 
uh, I think most of you have been taught about assessment of patient in ICU. But the important point which should be covered is the patient's neurological status, musculoskeletal status, cardiopulmonary status, and it should be documented before a patient is put on ECMO. So, so what all inclusion criteria we should consider before starting a patient on a patient is on ECMO and to start physiotherapy, what all inclusion criteria we should consider. So the first thing is respiratory parameters. So when the oxygen requirement is below 60% with a saturation of more than or around 90%, Is it, uh, is it clear to you all? Hello? Yes, sir. So, to consider a patient for physiotherapy when he or she is on ECMO, so the inclusion criteria in respiratory parameters will be a patient's oxygen requirement is more than uh, less than or equal to 60%. Saturation is more than or equal to 90%. Oxygen labels in blood. CO2 labels should be more than 60 mm of Hg. And the carbon dioxide labels should be less than 80 mm of Hg. So these are the respiratory parameters we should consider before starting patient's treatment in if a patient is on ECMO. The cardiac parameters which we should consider. Hello. So the cardiac parameters which we should consider is the patient's heart rate. Heart rate should be more than 40 and less than 140. Blood pressure. And in when monitoring for blood pressure, it is very important to see if the patient is managed with high level of vasopressures and inotropes if the level of vasopressures and inotropes is on the higher side so it is very important to consider these and then only do physiotherapy for these patients so the maintenance of mean arterial pressure should be more than 65 mm of hg in the arterial blood gases the patient's ph should be more than 7.25 and in ventilator the peep should be less than 10 centimeters of water any doubts till now hello any doubts till now so when considering for safety the first thing as i discussed the patient will be on multiple tubes catheters and cannulas so making sure that all the tube catheters cannulas are fixed and the monitoring continuous monitoring is being done so if we start a patient's passive movement and with that simple passive movement if a patient's saturation is falling so what should we do should we continue or should we stop Hello. Yes. So we have to ask this patient as and when we are going to treat the patient. So you monitored all the vitals, you checked all the ventilatory settings, and then you decided, okay, we'll start our patient's treatment. The patient is deeply sedated. So when a patient is deeply sedated and paralyzed, the first thing you will start to think of doing passive movements and positioning so if you change the position of patient and it patient desaturates so you have to ensure that the patient is in position which, which maintains the highest saturation clear so the safety considerations are precautions for tubes cannulas drains catheters and all the attachments clear Any doubts? So, what are 
the exclusion criteria. So if a patient has myocardial infarction in last 24 hours, so it is very important to give the doctors time to assess and then only we start. So if a patient has cardiac arrest in last 24 hours, then patient is already on ECMO. So we have to exclude that patient and then give them time to recover and then we'll start our treatment. And with minimal movements or passive movements or positioning, if there is desaturation and if a patient is on high inotropic and vasopressure support, then it is important to monitor and include accordingly. Then if a patient's intracranial pressure is raised, as the patient is already on blood thinners, the chances of bleeding or thrombosis increases. So, and if the ICP is getting monitored, patient's intracranial pressure is getting monitored and it is already raised, so it is important to wait for the ICP to come down, intracranial pressure to come down and then to start the treatment. If a cannula site is loose or unstable, so it is very important to make sure that that site is safe and then only we will do the movement. And if acute case of spinal cord injury patient comes, then it is very important to consider that injury and decide accordingly to include a clear yes, any questions any doubt then starts the initiation of rehab so in initiation of rehab as we discussed vital monitoring of vital signs and every, uh, securing everything then discuss with the duty nurse or the on duty doctor that the, the pay, optimization of pain is already done then the most important thing if a patient's guardian is available then taking informed consent is very important clear any doubts so once you start your treatment, it is very important to keep the assessment going on as the days go on so that you can keep track of your treatment and document it thoroughly. Clear? Any questions? There's one question. So, yes. Uh, so, why is it not in SBI injury? Spinal cord injury? Like, what do we have to take care of in SBI? The question is in spinal yes. cord injury, you said uh, you need to take care of something. I think she missed that. Would you please repeat? So, it's spinal an acute spinal cord injury. It is, hello, uh, Ambika, are you explaining or should I do? Should I explain? Please, please do it. Acute spinal cord injury. So in, in a case of acute spinal cord injury, it is very important to determine the level of injury and the extent of its effect on the patient's body Be without deciding the level of injury and the extent. If we, so if a patient has come to us, he, is on, he or she is on ECMO and with spinal cord injury, but there, are, there, are, there is a type of ECMO when the patient is awake and we start doing movement and we do not consider that the patient has an acute spinal cord injury. So we might worsen the situation the patient is in. Clear? So it is very important to determine the level of injury and the extent of its effect on the patient's body. Clear? Yes, sir. So, this, these seven steps for rehab, which you can see on the screen. So, inpatient for adults on venovenous extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, this was done in United Kingdom. So, this was by the ECMO Physiotherapy Network. 
agreement for best practice. So these seven steps. So the pre-treatment safety risk assessment, as I explained to you, then you should involve the bedside nurse and the duty doctor with your physiotherapy and respiratory care planning. Then all the cannula, catheters, and everything should be secured while mobilizing the patient. Then, as we discussed, the hemodynamic and respiratory stability. Uh, if you remember, I mentioned some values. If you want, I can repeat them again. Hello. So, so the respiratory stability. Uh, if you all have read about uh, ICU mobilization criteria, the red light green light and yellow light one it is taken from there hello yes sir, sir. yes sir they have read the 2014 criteria yes, yes. I yes exactly the 2014 guideline for icu mobilization criteria so i will repeat it once so for detail you can go through that article and see what are the icu mobilization criteria so the respiratory parameters the Oxygen requirement should be less than 60%. Saturation should be equal or more than 90%. The, in blood gases, PO2 should be more than 60 mmHg. Carbon dioxide should be less than 80 mmHg. And the patient's respiratory rate should be less than 30 breaths per minute with pH of more than 7.25 and PEEP of less than 10 centimeters of water. Clear? So, after considering all the hemodynamic and respiratory uh, stability, the respiratory treatment in the respiratory treatment, the positioning of patient, postural drainage, then chest physiotherapy, suctioning, and then rehab process, which includes passive movement. If a patient is deeply sedated, then includes passive movements and positioning. If a patient is mild to moderately sedated, Dated, then depending on the patient's sedation level, then on the patient's cognitive state, informed consent or assent should be obtained at the start of treatment, as I explained. And the pain management is very important to ensure the patient is comfortable. Any questions till now? So, as you all saw, that these were the seven recommended guidelines given by the ECMO Physiotherapy Network. So this is again a study published in 2022, which gave for the assessment, inclusion, exclusion, initiation of rehab, and then assessment of patients on ECMO after rehab. So once you complete your rehabilitation, and after that, you should assess the patient its progress so that, that after each session, you can document how much improvement there has been. Any doubts? No, sir. So it is very important to see whether the expected results of rehab. So if you see a patient is uh, having secretions, pooling, uh, secretions are getting pulled up. And with all the effort of your chest physiotherapy, postural drainage, it is not getting cleared up. So you have to document it and think accordingly so that what we can do to clear the patient's lungs. Any questions till now? Good. So in this, as we spoke about the history of days, uh, in management of patients with H1N1 influenza, with only respiratory failure, a new concept has been emerged as awake ECMO. Hello. Yes, sir. So this awake ECMO concept is very important for us. As the patient is awake, we can explain them the importance of the exercises. And with that, we can achieve the maximum level of rehabilitation from the patient. Clear? Yes, sir. 
so when a patient is deeply sedated so only passive movements with positioning postural drainage then uh, with postural drainage for secretions and suctioning next when a patient is mild to moderate sedation with mild to moderate sedation then according to the muscle power passive movements active assisted active and then resistive movements when a patient is awake then we will teach patients in bed neck and trunk control edge of bed sitting close kinetic exercises standing with support or without support and ambulating patient out of bed once the strength of quadriceps and hamstrings is more than 2 plus so this awake ecmo concept it came in 2000 uh, this came in 2021 as the patient is on veno venus then the like it is accordingly planned and the patient is treated <coughs> sorry any questions till now good so this was all about ecmo and the physiotherapy approach so this you can see a patient on ecmo with the ventilator ecmo machine respiratory nurse all the lines and tubes if they are clear, clear and visible to you all <coughs> is it visible to you all yes good so when mobilizing a patient on ecmo it is very important to ensure that all the lines tubes and catheters are secured like uh, when i talk about mobilization it is mobilizing out of bed and then ensure the patient's quadriceps and hamstring self strength of more than 2 plus and the patient oxygen requirement is minimal and the patient and the physician the attending physician has cleared patient has cleared patient for the mobilization clear yes sir any questions about ecmo or goal of physiotherapy well the patient is on ecmo so how quickly can you start uh, mobilizing the patients when they still on ecmo or do they have to be removed off and then you start mobilization out of bed uh, so if a patient is on ecmo and ventilator so when the ventilatory settings are according to your mobilization criteria and the patient is awake and understanding your commands and the pain is managed and the patient is comfortable with a strength of quadriceps and hamstrings more than 2 plus so that patient can be a little weight on his legs then the mobilization out of bed mobilization is started so before start, starting out of bed mobilization it is very important to ensure that when the patient was in initial stage with severe respiratory failure and deeply sedated it is important to maintain passive movements positioning so that to prevent weakness or prevent muscle weakness pressure sores or dvt risks any question so even if they are still connected on it you can still mobilize it all those criteria are hello ha uh, so i just asked you a question 
uh, sorry, it was not audible. I'm sorry. So yes, can you please repeat it? I am asking is 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 uh, in the criteria, okay? Uh, for what you said, no, that. Uh, uh, is it not important that uh, the patient is removed off the device? Like with the device still on, you can no. mobilize. With the with the device still on, the patient can be mobilized. So with this awake ECMO concept, so this mobilize the mobilization of patient. So with the awake ECMO, the patient can be mobilized with the ECMO device, ensuring that both the cannula the veno venous cannula in both the veins is secured the patient can be mobilized so, uh, i think we've come to an end of the class. yes yes so this marks the end of the role of physiotherapy in ecmo then we are going to discuss about insufflator exsufflator role of insufflator and exsufflator in uh, ICU. So to start for that, uh, let's start with the airway clearance techniques. You must ha all have read about airway clearance techniques. Uh, may I know, like, is this uh, master's or uh, bachelor's? There are five students who are pursuing master's, of course, can be right now. Six, sorry. Six, six. Okay. And uh, there's one more a student who joined us. So, and the rest of them are from bachelors. Both their BPT, both their BPT yeah. final year. Uh, so, they must have read about uh, uh, respiratory therapy, airway clearance techniques. Bronchial hygiene, that's hygiene, airway clearance techniques. So, the name this insufflator and exsufflator it sounds very heavy but at the end of the day it is just a technique it's a machine it's a device which helps in airway clearance hello is this a clear to you all Hello. Yes, I see your audible. Good. So, with clearing that point, I will go to the slide and we will start discussing about mechanical insufflator and exsufflator. Okay? Good. Great. Sir, so there is a question. Yes, please. Uh, sir, uh, no. how, long, how long are the patients keeping ECMO? Like, uh, for the, like the ventilation, uh, is there any winning criteria as such? Are there any winning criteria as such? Uh, no. Mobilizing the patient with ventilator? No, how long are the patients uh, kept in ECMO? Since it's a temporary uh, invasion, which is kept for temporary invasion. How long are they kept? This, how long they are kept on ECMO? Yes. Okay. So, so, as I mentioned earlier, first I mentioned it is a temporary technique. Okay. So it is not a treatment. What it does is basically uh, you must have heard about bypass. In bypass, so from bypass what is done is your heart will stop and the machine takes over the work of heart okay so in this what exactly is happening your lung there is acute lung injury okay and your lung has to work and to recover so what you are doing with this extra corporal membrane oxygenation you are taking the workload of lungs off from the lungs okay you are giving them time to recover Clear? So you are giving them time to, to recover. So once lungs are recovered, then disconnect patient from the ECMO device. So use of ECMO is indicated 
when all other methods and treatments are not working patient maximum ventilatory settings are used and and the patient is also in prone position with all the ventilatory settings so the patient uh, then ecmo used but with ecmo what comes is that if a patient is 